first building on the left. If anyone wants to hit the head before we start off the day, feel free. This is a good real quick little window if anyone wants to go back to real quick. We're going to do a little protocol to start off the day as we do. Uh, sorry I missed you the other day. I kept got some night tendonitis. I couldn't even walk the other day. So uh, I'll be here for a bit today. So we'll start off with a little uh, protocol and a little cultural uh, awareness we like to start off every day. Uh, it's very important to recreate. Uh, we have this word, karakamaoli. You're going to hear that word a lot um, if you go to any other native features. Kanaka is the name of the people here. And we say Maoli, it means the quiverers. Uh, when we chant, when we pray, we, we come out with very so intense energy that our voice will have a vibrato to it. Uh, if you go down to Tahiti, they're the Maori. You go to New Zealand, they're the Maori. Uh, we're the Maori. So it's actually having that quiver part is very important. It's that connectivity between all Polynesians. But Kanaka is the people of this place. It also is the science. So we had aquaculture going on, you know, fish farms out there. Uh, we have beautiful, beautiful terraces of taro that we grow over here that actually improved your natural resources around you by doing agriculture. Instead of being, oh, let's just put poison and plow everything and ruin the system for some monocropping. Like, um, when it's kind of amazing how, you know, the, the California was the breadbasket of the whole nation for a long time. Like, you guys stayed actually from, like, you go inland, you go south, all of you, there was that, the whole, um, River Valley up there was just incredibly bountiful. And then they did really poor farming practices. And now it's a waste that. You guys go take a drive down the, the Santa Cruz uh, River Valley and stuff. It used to be just absolutely just astounding with life. And then they overtaxed the resources and there you go. You get Western, regular Western mindedness, creating deserts all around you. And it goes all the way back to even the Mediterranean where that whole area was perfectly abundant with giant forests. And you go there now, what is it? A big desert, right? So humans are really good at overtaxing resources when you look at indigenous cultures they had checks and balances in the form of uh, it was religious but it was science so they were very smart to create all these laws they would put you to death for screwing around um, if you didn't take care of your aina they had a bailuna a chief that would walk down the district and be like hey you're not taking care of your water properly your family is evicted period like you're kicked out of the village get the hell out of there <laughs> and the priest said hey, you're good you come over here and do it they hire the next family come here this is your kuleana now you don't own the land, but you're a caretaker. And if you didn't do your job, you know, there it goes. They knew better than just let people, you know, mess with your resources and just absolutely destroy a space for ego or for whatever. So it's really important that we, um, in this day, kind of have even any idea that that's a thing. And it's really sad how people forget the lessons of before. And it's real easy to do that. Um, even the, the natives, which don't hardly exist anymore across North America, it was hard to find actual uh, native run areas they, uh, I noticed they, you know, they had fire techniques. They would actually start fires, so you wouldn't have the buildup of underbrush to create a giant, massive forest fire. Um, our space, Lahaina, was well known for thousands of years. The last couple thousand years that they've been inhabited here, um, there's fires that happen there every hundred years. We'll get a hurricane force wind, um, a high pressure to the north, low pressure to the south, and that's what happens. Is it comes roaring through Lahaina with 90 plus mile an hour winds, and it just decimates the town. Fire or no fire, the wind uses the used to trash the town. It was all grass houses. Uh, so back in the day, they knew the wind's coming. They would tie down the town and leave. They already knew that a thousand plus years ago, fifteen hundred years ago. Um, if you, are you, what school are you folks going to visit today? You going to Hailuna? Uh No, we're going oh. to a new charter school, Hawaii Technical Academy. That that's awesome. temporarily in a church, but is going to work on a new space up uh, okay. up in Apili. Awesome, awesome. Apili, Hong Kong. Well, Lahaina Luna, what's cool, it's the old school West of the Rockies. They had a printing press there. Uh, it was still, what, Pueblos and stuff, where your folks are all from. Um, but it was 1832. The school was founded in 1834. They got a printing press over here at the top of the hill by the, uh, below the L, but up there is, as far as development goes in West and uh, Lahaina Town. And uh, they were educating natives, and uh, they made a missionary school. But it was cool because they were printing Hawaiian language newsletters. And by the time, uh, the 1870s, we were talking about 200 plus different indigenous newspapers in our in our country here. Um, you got to think that these people were the most literate nation, 90 plus percent literacy uh, in the 1890s. That's insane. Maybe you go to the rest of the world, we still don't have 90 percent in a lot of the world of literacy. So these people were highly literate. They were really spiritual still, but they were being changed into this missionary culture. It was against the law and the rules to actually practice your old culture. However, they were able to print and maintain and keep records and learn from ancient days. Now our school's alma mater, uh, we sing it, and it's the only Hawaiian language alma mater in the world, and we sing about uh, the last two lines are which is the ever-burning torch of Lahaina. Uh, will never be extinguished by the hurricane forces wind. Uh, it's our alma mater that a burning fire Sweet. will not be extinguished. And uh, 
our symbols of church. So what do you know? That's our <laughs> we kind of knew this. Now, the silly part, I'm looking on this crazy social media di- you know, garbage experience. Uh, it's so crazy <laughs> what people do with that thing. And we have dum-dums going like, I can't believe this happened. This never should have happened. Um, hello, it's our freaking, it's an alma mater, dummies. Like, it's not like it's never happened here. It happens every hundred years. Happened uh, only 80 years ago, there was a big fire. So just if you got 95, 97 mile an hour winds, a, a house below mine clocked the wind at 97 at one point. I am a candy near our Paul waterfalls for fun, and I've never felt 90 plus mile an hour winds that This is my, I went through three hurricanes already. So it was, it was incredible. There was roofs flying over my house. We live on the top of the hill. Still, I've only was gone for several hours to, um, my mom was alive and I snuck back into town, which was really hard to do. Um, but again, we have to have this history and a relation to it to understand the future. <laughs> if you don't know what the hell happened yesterday, if you just want to ignore it or claim it bad science, or whatever, it's really wild that the world can fall into that pitfall of its own making. Totally. I totally. don't believe the science. What? <laughs> oh, you believe, you believe ego <laughs> over science? It's crazy. <laughs> so it's good to, good to have groups like you folks that, um, you know, you're going to learn stuff now that can help the rest of your existence. I was emancipated at 15 and uh, went out and learned how to do endemic agriculture or indigenous agricultural projects and we took back and reclaimed several places but we never had a sturdy nonprofit. all of this was family run i am venture so i went several different projects they've all hit the skids one way or another uh, family issues this and that having a good nonprofit because uh, educational systems have financing nonprofits have defense basically and if you have a good sturdy architecture of that it can drive you forward way harder than um, it's hard to form a nonprofit because we have pain in the butt. We got everything expedited. It still took a year plus to get our get everything through to get our um, our certification. What year was that? Uh, not, three years ago. So it took a, two years, two and a half years ago. We finally got our nonprofit cert. But we we started everything in with Care Act funding. That's some federal funding. Even that, we had eight week project. We got the money on the seventh week, and it was because the core the core council for us city council was just like total pain it was such a pain in the butt we're checking all the boxes we did everything totally, properly totally. we had a bunch of students we're lucky that another nonprofit that one of our elite one of our leaders runs um, that, um, Maui Nui Marine Resource Council at Ekolu luckily they sponsored like $190,000 out of their finances to keep everyone working on several projects across Maui and we did all these cool projects and the money finally came through week 7 of 8 and what's awesome is that uh, it's on uh, Hawaiian Airlines. If you get on a Hawaiian Airlines flight ever, um, and you, I don't know if it'll be anywhere else, but it's called Maui Cares. There's a great documentary about it. There's all the different projects on there. So if you check out Maui Cares, I don't know, it should make it on YouTube sooner or later. But our friends at Inflatable Films did a really cool thing we did. It was ours, there's a project on Molokai, there's projects on Hana, so it was pretty neat. So, you know, we kind of got to jump on board when it comes to nonprofit um, projects. Because wherever you're at, if you do it, just so you know, if you folks are doing volunteerism, I hope you're taking your hours down. That's another thing. So I know this is good for your head and your heart and teaching you knowledge and wisdom and things. However, put it on paper. It'll go on your next college. If you go to another college, it goes on your application. How much hours of volunteerism you do. It goes on your, um, even if you go to a corporate job, put your volunteerism on there. Every hour of it counts. You see, I did whatever, 100 hours, whatever, 1,000 hours of volunteerism. It literally bumps you to the top of the list in almost anywhere that you go from there. Even sports sponsor, uh, uh, sponsorships, surf sponsorships or whatever. whatever.